what he had to do. The governor had made this decision on his own. Um, I had, you know, I spoke to him. I, I laid out the political landscape as, as I saw it, but frankly, um, you know, uh, he had spoken to Richie Fife earlier, and I think he'd gotten a good measure of that. Um, and so, you know, we, we had a very good conversation, but I have to tell you, it was, it was my impression, and I, I've, I've heard some of the uh, commentary on the press that, you know, this person or that pushed the governor. That isn't what happened at all. The governor had made his decision, and the governor decided um, that he was going to do what he felt was right. He, he as he said uh, today, it wasn't the one issue in the newspaper. Um, you know, that, that right. did it. It was the, the whole collection of them but, together. But what happened between last week, about six days ago, when he campaigned and you introduced him, and today? Well, I mean, again, I, I think that, um, you know, circumstances matter. And, um, you know, I, I think it was important that I, you know, sit with him and talk to him as others have about the entire landscape and the difficulty. And the governor knew when he announced his campaign uh, last Saturday uh, that it was going to be very, very difficult. He had a, um, uh, a, a tough hill to climb, but he was prepared to do it. And as these things come out and more and more happens, it just becomes a tougher thing. And, and remember something else. He has the uh, d additional difficulty he's got to govern and he's got to pass a budget and he's very mindful of that. So I think that, you know, he did uh, the best that um, he could, and he realized that this just can go on forever and get picked apart. You don't get a lot of progress. Jay, what time, Jay, what time did he make the decision? I, I would say he made the decision by 5.30. 5.30 uh, last, this last, morning? No, no, last night. Yeah. He, he, had, he had made the decision uh, at some point during the Certainly by 5.30 that was done. And, um, and he knew what he was going to do. And so anybody that came out afterwards and was saying that they... Well, he came you know, out afterwards. Well, I know that, but that, that was a function of the fact that he had a press avail. And, you know, what do you say unless you're going to announce it at that moment? He wanted to have an opportunity to talk to the people that were important Jay, and friends and the rest. You know. Jay, he said he was a real political realist. Now, yeah. you have the uh, Democratic State uh, Committee uh, Convention coming up in May. Right. And there are people who say he could not have gained the 25 percent support that he needed. Was that the reality of it, that he saw that was a dead end street? Well, I mean, I mean, he saw that as one of the obstacles. I don't, you know, what happens is where the state committee is at any given time is where it is that moment. What it would have done at the end of May is something entirely different. But with what was going on, I think that he didn't see it getting better. He just saw it getting tougher. Ultimately, um, you know, he looked at this entire scene. He made the decision very much himself. I, I, I have to tell you, um, he was resolute, very confident in his decision. Didn't take a heavy lift. This wasn't something where he was talked into it by a bunch of people. He really saw it as it was, and he said, "You know what? It, it's time he has to get on with the budget and do, do the right thing for the Democratic Party." Is this going to please the leadership of the state? Is this going to please the Democratic leadership of the state? It's certainly going to going to take away something that has has, has been difficult for the time. But I I think that uh, you know now we move forward and we unite. I'm Jay, sorry. are you Any getting ready to have continued in your opinion? Say again. Is there any way that he could have continued? How could it be continued this campaign at all? Well, it, again, it, it's getting tougher and, and tougher, and I'm sure that he could have continued his campaign, but I think he did the right thing, and he made the, you know, the decision that um, I, I, I think uh, he should have. I think so are we, are we going to... The last 24 to... hours of this all unfolded, though, what did you see and think when you saw uh, the Times article yesterday? And this, it, it seemed to be that there was a quantum shift yesterday yeah. in this whole process. Well, again, it's, it's a mounting... Uh, process. You know, this wasn't the first article. There were other articles that, that just caused problems. There was this whole, you know, tortured process uh, with these rumors that although it didn't pan out and they didn't, you know, we didn't have an article that followed, it still was it was still very difficult. Well, yesterday was, was something different, but yes. Are you getting ready to throw your weight behind Andrew Cuomo, laying the groundwork for the party leadership to stand behind him? Well, I, I, I would suspect that there will be rapid uh, movement to Andrew Cuomo. I will be endorsing Andrew Cuomo. 60. I would be surprised if we didn't have 62 county chairs endorsing him rather rather quickly. I think that uh, you know he's the natural choice, obviously, to be uh, our candidate for governor. And I, I uh, think that uh, the governor uh, feels the same and will say it at the appropriate time. What do you say to Bill Perkins, who's among others, asked the governor to resign completely? What would you say to him? Well, you know, again, on, on what I've read uh, today, and I'm you know I'm not going to look at this in the legalist sense and what and what happens tomorrow. You know, I don't know, but right now, and I will tell you, that's the only way you make these comments. I don't think that that, that has merit at all. So what advice how quickly do you give the can, governor can about the budget this? crisis that's going on? How does he move past this? Well, I, I think he's in a very good position now because now he's no longer political. No one can accuse him of doing anything to get reelected, can he? But what so about how quickly can we expect Andrew Cuomo right. to finally admit that he's running for office? And does David Patterson, if this scandal continues to unfold and the investigation continues to produce, you know, difficult information, does that 
affect Andrew Cuomo's candidacy, or would it be better for the Democrats if Patterson wasn't there still? Well, again, I think that Andrew Cuomo is going to present uh, his own message and his own vitality to this campaign. So I don't think that they're connected um, unless you know, he chooses to connect them in some fashion. I don't, I don't think they're connected naturally. What I will say to you is that Andrew Cuomo will make his decision when he feels it's, it's most appropriate. He certainly has to get it done before May. I have every confidence that he will. And, um, you know, we're going to have a united Democratic Party, and I think that's a good thing going into November. Was there any consideration at all to just step down altogether? Not to my knowledge. Thank With this announcement today, do the Democrats feel much more confident of victory this fall? Well, again, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the bottom line of it is that if you don't have a primary, and you don't have a primary looming that can tear the party apart and use a lot of resources, you're going to go strong. You're going to go in stronger. I mean, that's just a fact. People, some people don't like that fact, but that is the fact. And we will not have a divisive primary at the top of the ticket. I'm working hard to see that we don't have them, you know, on, on the top what if of the ticket. What, what if uh, Steve Levy gets into this race? Well, I mean, I, I think ultimately, um, you know, and I like Steve. Uh, I know him. Uh, he's uh, my neighbor in Suffolk County, and I respect him uh, very much so. Uh, I think that Andrew Cuomo is going to be our candidate. He's going to be our nominee. I think it's a, a, a tremendously uh, difficult uphill lift for someone at this point to jump into a gubernatorial race, statewide race. I know how tough they are. I've been a participant in a losing one, so I know how that can be done. And I'm just telling you that I, I think that would be a mistake on his part. And I, I think that there's, you know, there are things for him to look at sometime later. What about, doesn't this put the investigation, doesn't this put him in a very dicey situation going forward, Andrew Cuomo? Well, I mean, you know, his office does have to investigate uh, what occurred, and I'm sure he'll do that. I mean, he's, he's, he's had that. The, the, that's the duty of the attorney general's office. I don't think it's going to be any dicier or more uncomfortable than, than, than normal. I mean, you. you know, you got to do what you have to do, I guess. But do you think this investigation, we're talking about this mounting process, if it's still continuing to make headlines, won't that hurt Democrats my, all over? No, my, my guess is that, you know, that, that investigation should be done expeditiously. I don't think it's a complicated one, and I think it'll be done. Jay, you're going to stick around as state chairman? Am I going to? Stick around as state chairman. Yes. You, you, you'll, you'll be through this whole campaign process. I, I would suspect so, yeah. That's what I'm attending. Do you expect to be chairman afterwards? Well, I mean, that, you know, can we take one thing at a time? You know, this is, a, this is a, keeping me very busy, this job. Jay, sorry, we're yeah, a little late. Okay, Just I'm sorry. Read or if you haven't heard sure. the question. Uh, do you have any reports, do you have knowledge of undoing, let's say, pressuring? Do you, do you feel the government, governor was unduly pressured by anyone to take this action? No, I, I really don't. I want to make that point clear. The governor came to this decision, I believe, pretty much on his own. He spoke to only a handful of people yesterday. I met with him late in the day. Rich Fife, his campaign manager, met with him and outlined uh, you know, some of the same things I did to, to just the political landscape. I, I was there when the governor told us of his decision. I had the sense that uh, he was 80% of the way there before you know, uh, I walked into the room. And I, I will tell you this, um, I admire him for you know, looking at it realistically. He did it in a very uh, focused manner. He was very confident, and it was clear to me that he was very comfortable with his decision. It was just pretty much had gotten to the point where it was enough, you know, and uh, he'd been fighting upstream, and now we had this investigation, and he understood this was going to do, had the potential to do more damage to the Democratic Party and to the process than he wanted, and, and he just felt it was time to pack it in. Was there any idea of him going back and forth today and perhaps needing someone to put a little pressure on him, to strong arm him, so to speak? No, and I don't think that happened. I, I think that um, he, he made clear to uh, Rich, who was in the room, and myself, that he'd have to make a comment at a press avail last night that would be, you know, a little bit more vague about what he was doing, that he'd be staying in the race at that moment, because he didn't want to step on the story today. But he made it very clear that this was going to be done today. He needed the time to talk to you know, his friends and closest uh, people to him because he didn't want them reading about it in the paper, seeing it on TV. Does he have a future uh, as an elected official in possibly some other office? Yeah. I don't see why not. Yeah. Jay, go ahead. 